Hello everyone, I'm Kaluna Spitfire, a variety streamer on Twitch. My main game to play is Seven Days to Die, and I do a lot of videos using and modding the Twitch integration built into the game. In today's video, I'll be going over the changes that occurred in setting up modlets and their files for A21. There were a couple really big changes, including the mod info XML file. And if you're here just looking for that one change, I will put the time code here <laughs> and also put in chapters for people searching for specifics. The second biggest change was with the Twitch events XML file. And I'll put the time code here again uh, and within the chapters as well. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel for more seven days to die content. Let's dig in. If you have not already, you will want to download a copy of Notepad++ before starting to make your own modlets. It is a free program that really makes the modding process significantly easier. I have a video that shows you how to download it here, and I will link it in the description below. So overall, the file format for your modlet has not changed greatly. You still need your example modlet here, and then you need your config file and then your mod info file. Now this has changed. The mod info file is one that has changed greatly and I will open that up right now. You're going to right click and go edit with notepad plus plus. It's going to pop up. Now, this is the new format. I will put a copy of the required coding and an example of how it should be written right here on the screen so you can see it without all the green. It will be, I'll put it down here in this white space. Um, but be aware that it must be typed exactly. Now I will be putting a copy of this um, on my Discord for easy downloads. So you can just copy and edit it for your modlets. My Discord link will be in the description below. Another option is to copy it exactly from the fandom wiki. I will also post that in the description below um, where I found this information. And it's a great resource for people who like to mod things. So highly recommend the fandom wiki for modding. So that being said, you do need a carrot, XML, carrot, uh, carrot, then your name, space value equals, and then whatever you want to name this. This really doesn't matter. Whatever you want to name your modlet is what you're going to put here, then backslash and carrot. It is required to have a name. It's an internal name like this green part says. The green part does not matter, by the way. Um, this is just information for you. It, like it says, it's an internal name, like an ID of the mod. It should be globally unique. So it's really good to put your name in here. Um, I, this is just the name of my own modlet that I use for Twitch integration spawns. So I just call it my name for Twitch integration spawns modlet. That's simple enough. Um, you can call it whatever you like. There is no format for this that you need to specifically follow. Now display name. This is used for display purposes like showing the mods UI at some point. So you just make sure this is appropriate. Um, but again, you can change this to be whatever you want. It doesn't have a specific thing that you must call it. Um, you can use this exact same name if you'd like. You can copy and paste it. Um, you can call it something slightly different. It really doesn't matter as long as it is unique to you. Version. This is the version of the mod. So this is just mostly for your own internal purposes. Um, so say that this is my very first mod version of this. Uh, so I put 21 as the version. You do not have to put 21 as the version. You could just put one uh, version one. You can call it however you want to do this. Uh, I did 21 because it's alpha 21 and then 0.1 because this was my first build of it. Uh, description value. This creates a custom variety of the Twitch integration game events and spawns for Kaluna Spitfire. I just wrote this. This can be whatever you want this description to be. It's completely optional. You do not have to have this part in here. Um, this is just for people who are looking at this mod going, what the heck does this do um, in the files? So you can leave this blank if you want to. Just make sure that it exists. It just doesn't have to have words in this space. It's fine. Author value. This is whoever you are. Whoever, well whoever made the modlet, I would hope, is the name of the person that you're putting here. So for me, I put Kaluna Spitfire. Website value is completely optional. I don't have a website that I am using for this mod. So I have it blank, as you see here. You again can do this for the description. It can look just like this with this blank space option, if you'd like to. Again, I will be posting all of this exact coding. You do need to make sure all of these pieces are here. You do not need the green parts. These are completely just for description purposes. So this is how your modlet info file should look. 
Like I said, the description could simply be removed if you do not wish to have it. You just need to have it be blank, like so. And this would also work. So going into the config folder, I have the five basic files for XML that you will use the most often. However, there are many mods out there that use other ones. They follow a similar format. So I'm not going to share all of them. The one I'm going to go into next is the entity classes XML. Go ahead and right click and edit with Notepad++. The most important part of this file are the pieces that are in blue and red. You need to have this at the beginning where it says config with the carrots surrounding it, and then append space xpath equals quotes backslash entity underscore classes quotes and carrot. The part in green is the mod that I have added in this place. This is just an example of where you would put your information. You do not have to have these exact things, um, but this is just an example. At the end of this file for entity classes, when you are done, you will need to have a caret backslash append and a caret, and then caret backslash config and a caret. Now, what do you do with the entity classes XML? This is the file that you want to edit if you want to make a new spawn type or create. So if you want to take an existing zombie, animal, etc., and make it different from the base game, this is the file you want to start with. If you're planning to keep the same zombies, animals, or crates the same as the base game, you can skip ahead to game events. A few important things to keep in mind for entityclasses.xml, there have been a few changes to the XML for A21, including meshes. Meshes now often have this at symbol and have a slightly different name. And I believe there's a couple other things like this that have occurred. So go ahead into the original entity classes file and see what has changed a little bit before you make your own modlets because you may experience some issues if you just copy and paste old if you just copy and paste old files that you have used previously especially like the meshes they won't match up anymore so be really careful and mindful about those pieces for those new to editing mesh is usually what your spawn will look like so what your crate will look like how the zombies look like etc in addition, we now have things called like user spawn type uh, menu. So this one is something that has been added and does need to be on your zombies and things like that. So there are some new things in the files. Like I said, go ahead into the regular entity classes.xml and before editing your own files, take a look at what has changed um, in some of those, even just the normal zombies so that you can understand um, what might need to change for your particular things. The next file we're going to look at is the buffs file. This file is only really needed if you are adding things to your zombies, like changing how they might look or how they behave. Um, so a lot of people don't end up using this file, but if you do, it needs to have a caret configs caret, then caret append space xpath equals quotes backslash buffs quotes caret. All of your information would then go here in that next section, whatever you are editing for the buffs, and then caret backslash append caret and caret backslash configs caret. The next file that we're going to edit is the game events file, where you're going to right click and go to Notepad. Now this file has so many new options for modders to hook into, and I highly recommend you look at the green lines at the bottom of the main game events file of the game and really take a look at what is possible. The devs have added in so many fun things that you can use and play with in A21. They worked hard to add things for the modding community to use, as well as implemented a lot of adventure room type events that can be triggered in different ways that are now even present in some of our POIs. This file is where you decide exactly how to spawn your zombies, animals, crates, what happens, do any sounds happen when they spawn, how many spawn, do they gradually get more spawning as your game stage increases, or do they all turn into bears after you shoot them? All of this is possible and more with the game events file. I will show you two different versions of what the file needs to look like. One without this section at the top. This section does a specific job and then one with the section so that you can see what it looks like if you want this part. So overall, your file needs to have caret configs caret, 
then Kara append xpath equals quote backslash game events quote caret and then your edited section here then caret backslash append caret and caret backslash configs caret however if you are like me you may also want this component to be in here as well this section is optional However, it will allow you to change the number of maximum amount of zombies, animals, etc., that you want to have able to be spawned at one time. Now, caveat, it will be very taxing on your computer and it will very likely lag your game if you go above the recommended 25 that the devs have put out. They put 25 for a reason, as that is what most computers on the specs that they have said can handle at one time. However, I like to have a little bit of chaos in my streams. And I have things like for somebody who's been subbed for two years, a hundred party girls spawn. It's a little bit crazy, but it's fun. So for this, I have caret set space xpath equals quotes, backslash, game events, backslash, at, max, underscore, entities, quotes, caret, this is a, and then 125, you put them in between, no spaces. I, this number can be anything you like. This is how many entities you want to spawn. I, I really, 125 is, is more than enough, and I promise you this will lag most computers. I have a server that I pay quite a bit of money to have a lot of space on, and this will lag even that server. So it, it, it does happen um so just be prepared it doesn't break that server but it does lag it quite a bit and if you're in the city when this happens it could be even worse now after that then you're going to want to caret backslash set backslash and this does go in between configs and in between the append xpath for game events section the next file that you're going to edit is your loot file If you're designing your own loot crates or want something specific to spawn when a spawn you have created dies, this is the file you want to edit. You can choose what items to include in a drop, whether it has a small or big chance of spawning that item, or if it's 100% of the time going to give you that item. Overall, the loot container file looks like this. You need to have caret configs caret, then caret append space xpath equals quotes backslash loot containers caret, quotes caret, and then your edited files here. And then caret backslash append caret, caret backslash configs caret. Okay, the next file that we are going to look at is the Twitch XML. Go ahead and right click, edit with Notepad. In here, this is the file to edit if you want things to be able to be triggered by actions in Twitch. So either by chat typing hashtag group bears or by clicking on it in the extension it needs to be in here you can choose to have it be only triggered on the streamer or on everyone you can choose things like if it's for bits sp pp and if you can choose the base amount that you want it to cost you can choose if overall discounts ignore the cost of this one for bit events and you can adjust things like command cooldown game stage etc overall the twitch xml file needs to have caret configs caret then caret append xpath equals quotes backslash twitch quotes caret. And then at the end, after you have your edited pieces in the middle, you need it to say caret backslash append caret and caret backslash configs caret. Now there is one more file that I want to show you. However, I didn't include it inside the modlet. And the reason for this is it does not stay within the modlet. If you're putting this on a server, if you're putting this on your local game, in your normal mods section of your seven days to die coding, it does not go in here. It does not go in here. You need to edit your original files, which is in data config. And it's going to be your Twitch events file down here at the bottom. This one you need to edit like this. And what I recommend you do is you take it, make a copy of the original, um, and then edit that. Um, and then have an original copy of the file somewhere 
so that if you make a mistake, something's broken, you can easily go back to the original. This is the file you adjust for your own personal events that occur for subs, gifted subs, channel points, raids, charity events. If you're using Twitch charity, hype train events, creator goal events like follower goals and sub goals, as well as specific bit amounts. I use 69 bits in my channel to spawn a party girl, for example. This file has majorly changed from A20. It no longer goes into the modlet files, but remains local on your machine. Why that is so important. First of all, it won't work if you put it anywhere else. Second, it is amazing because if you're using a server with another streamer, you both can have different things that occur for these kinds of events. You no longer have to have the same things occur. So if you wanted to have something happen for subs, but it was different than your friend who's also a streamer that wanted to have something else happen for subs, you can do that now because it's local to your machine and you can hook into any of the modlets that you're using on that server. So that's why this is no longer on your server, no longer in your mod files, it is local. However, you will need to keep in mind that you will need to edit this file every time, possibly every time, probably every time the game updates because this file probably will get wiped and need to be edited. I will be putting out a video to go more into depth on how to set this up and how to use it for yourself and edit it and change things, but this is just a really brief overview of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful to creating your own modlet files for A21. Like and subscribe for more videos like this one and check out some more of my videos like this one where I show you all the ins and outs of the new A21 Twitch integration. See you guys in the next one.